Assalamu alaikum everyone and welcome to day, I think we're on day 11, I'm starting to lose track of the Ramadan Dua Accelerator. Today's Dua is extremely short, it's only three words long, but the influence that this Dua can have is truly magnificent in what it, in what it entails and what it brings to us. And it might not seem like the most exciting of Dua's when you hear it, but when you actually understand the wisdom behind the du'a and why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is asking us to make this du'a, you understand there's, if I, if I had to break it up, it seems that there might be two camps of du'as. There are the du'as that bring something that is incredible, miraculous. You need something from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We always are in need of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but specifically you're seeking for him to intervene in one way or another for a situation that you have. You see that in the story of the youth of the cave. You see that with Prophet Ayyub. You see that with Prophet Zakariya alayhum salam This dua does something different where instead of asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to intervene and lead to a certain event happening, you are actually asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for a particular quality. This is more of a dua of refinement. It's a dua of being molded by what is pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The reason why I want to stress this is because so often we get into our dunya yourself. We get into our, our nafs takes hold of us, even when it comes to dua. And dua is not supposed to be a genie in a bottle type of approach where we just ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for things that we want in this life that our spark being shiny, it is supposed to be a means through which we draw closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And part of doing that is asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for the qualities that we know are going to better us and also help us achieve those things that we're hoping to achieve. Let's jump into the Arabic and then we will get into the translation and discuss the verse further. So this is going to be the first dua that the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was instructed to say. The first shot in the series that is for the Prophet. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Asa'ala Allahu al-maliku al-haq wa la ta'tan bil-Qur'ani min qabli an yuqda ilayka wahyuhu wahyuhu wa qul rabbi zidni ilma. The translation goes as follows exalted is god the true sovereign be not in haste with the quran before its revelation is completed for thee but say my lord increase me in knowledge this is a verse that was revealed specifically speaking to the prophet but its implications because allah SWT put it in the quran is that we are supposed to also be making the straw the scholars say that this, so if you read the verse right before this verse, it actually is talking about the Qur'an. So it's referencing the revelation of the Qur'an. And some scholars say that the verse that contains the du'a may be a reference to the Prophet ﷺ when he would receive revelation from Jibreel. He would be very speed, speedy and hasty in memorizing it for fear that he might forget it. And so some scholars say this is, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala telling him to slow down, don't be so hasty. Other scholars say that it may be pointing to the Prophet ﷺ wanting wahi or revelation to be rushed or to come down quickly and speed up. Well, regardless of whichever it is or if it's a combination of the two, what is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala telling the Prophet ﷺ? First and foremost, it's interesting because the dynamic is the Prophet ﷺ, by rushing in the memorization, is fearing that if he falls short, then everyone else is going to be lost. But the reality is the Prophet's job was to warn and to share the message. The Prophet ﷺ didn't have the responsibility to guide because Allah SWT is the one who guides. Allah tells him in the Quran, several places in the Quran, you're nothing but a warner. You just deliver the message. Don't try to take on people's hidayah because ultimately it's Allah SWT who holds that responsibility. And so by taking on that burden for himself and thinking it was solely him that's going to forget, He's separating himself in a sense from the fact that Allah subhanahu wa is actually the one who preserves the Qur'an. And that connection to the verse, Rabbi Zidni Ayman, is almost a reminder to just, not just the Prophet but also to us when we try to rely on our own faculties, that ultimately when we're trying to do good for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa it is actually falling back on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Instead of heavily relying on ourselves and thinking, if we don't do this, then we're going to end up failing. We should 
ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to strengthen us in the qualities that are going to allow us to do that thing. In the Prophet's case, because he is receiving revelation, which is unman, it is right, it is the beneficial knowledge, it is the knowledge of the unseen and the seen of this world. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling him, say, increase me in knowledge. This is a dua that should be used in multiple situations. First and foremost, it can be used if you're a student and you're studying. Rabbi Zidni Arman. It can also be used if you're studying deen and not secularly. You should always ask for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to increase you in knowledge. But also just in regular day-to-day -day life because the reality is the difference between success and failure in many cases is just knowing. Knowing certain things, knowing certain strategies, knowing certain skill sets, knowing certain facts. Think about a first time mom or dad right if especially if they didn't have siblings that they took care of everything is new and everything is scary and everything's difficult and the first time their kids start sniffling they're freaking out and they're running to the emergency room but then by second third fourth child they already know they have the knowledge of what's pretty normal and what's abnormal for a child and so they're a lot more lax that's what knowledge can do it brings about confidence it brings about a certain peace it brings about a certain level of autonomy in empowerment but knowledge that is not blessed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not knowledge worth having think about it. how many people do you know who know the most random things about random celebrities or just random fun facts that don't do much to benefit their lives and you almost sit there and you're like you're a library of a lot of nothing <laughs> and then you have people who mashallah tabarak Allah who it's almost like when you're talking to them it's as if they have a book open in their mind and you're wondering how do they know all these things I get questions actually about this a lot where it's like where did you learn these things where did you learn these things and for i i tell people where i learned and studied deen and i was in a closed halakha for seven eight years where we uh, studied pretty intensely with one of our mentors and teachers but had Allah subhanahu wa not given me benefit in that knowledge and not allowed me to hold on to it, then it wouldn't really matter because I wouldn't be able to pull these things out or remember them or know how to connect and synthesize what I learned. The fact that we were in the spaces of knowledge doesn't automatically mean that we are going to be knowledgeable. Nobody is knowledgeable except for by Allah subhanahu wa as well. So it's not us. And this is a reminder for us that the Prophet ﷺ had this worry. What I'm saying is that he was taken on that burden because he loves us so dearly and he wants he wants for us to be guided, right? In, in Surah Kaf, Allah tells the Prophet ﷺ, Are you going to kill yourself out of grief that they do not believe in this message, Ya Rasulullah? Basically, don't beat yourself up so much because at the end of the day, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to take care of that. Your job is just to deliver. Prophet wasalam, rushing to memorize is not because he's not depending on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or he's not or he's distancing himself from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in any way. A'udhu billahi min shaytan rajim. We're not suggesting that at all. It's, it's his humanness that's bringing him to rush because he doesn't want to fail us. He wants to help us be hopeful and, 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 and he wants to do his job to the utmost highest degree and how beautiful is it actually that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is almost relieving him of that worry and saying you don't have to rush you just do what you're supposed to do ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for knowledge and you're going to get it and uh, there was something that was mentioned in the tafsida the prophet ﷺ had said if a day comes upon me in which I do not increase in a knowledge that draws me nearer to God, may God not bless me that day. That's a really, really intense thing to say, but it just goes to show how important it was for the Prophet ﷺ to feel connected and close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That was his lifeline through so much stress and difficulty and trial in his life. I hope that this was interesting to you guys. If you enjoyed the video, then please like, comment below. Um, share with friends and there should be a playlist of all of these different videos if you're having a tr if you're having any trouble finding it it should pop up pretty soon on the screen <laughs> inshallah but if you are having any trouble finding it or want to share the playlist with people please feel free to do so and i will see you in the next one assalamu alaikum